Hello, YouTubers. I'm not an expert, and on this channel, we're going to be reviewing some tools and woodworking techniques that you may have seen before, or maybe you've never seen them. Hoping to bring you information from my experience as not an expert, so you can judge things and make decisions for yourself after getting a view of how a regular person handles some of these things. But to start with, I'm going to start with a tool review. Okay, this is a this is a Vivor router plane. And I like this plane because it was really inexpensive. But is it any good? Well, I went out and looked, and there are no reviews. Or at the time I bought this last year, there were no reviews on YouTube. There were only Amazon reviews. And the problem with Amazon reviews is it mostly it's just people going, hey, this was great. Well, that doesn't really tell you very much at all. <laughs> like, what does that person know? Do they have any idea what they're doing? What did they use it for? You know, so I'm going to show it to you and do a little use. Now, since I first reviewed this, I have seen a couple of other people review them. Uh, one was a, a, a YouTuber that goes by Let's Make Things. And the thing he made were new handles. So when we start talking about this, one of the first things you notice is it has these big, odd handles. Um, they're solid plastic held in with a bolt that goes through the base plate. They work fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but they aren't real attractive. So he made some that were much nicer uh, and he actually made them. So they kind of look like a spoke shave handle. They come out to the side. I would have gone with knobs. Well, apparently so would he, because he also made some knobs, but they're just bolted on very easy to replace if you don't like them. And let's face it, if you're shopping in this, in this price range, yeah, you probably don't care. Um, so the big handles, you can get your hands on there and really work the tool. The depth adjuster. So we have, a, we have a threaded bolt and a little disc that's threaded onto it that fits into this groove in the, in the end of the blade. Um, and then there's this tension adjuster, which is just a, a nut with a, a handle on it that holds the blade still. This works fine. Nothing wrong with it. The blade itself fits into this block uh, pretty snugly. There's a little tiny bit of play, but not much. I would say it's perfect because you don't want it to be hard to adjust, but also once you put the tensioner on, it doesn't move. It's solid. Feel pretty good about that. This block is a big block of steel. The blade, which is sort of a, a I believe they call that a nags tooth. It doesn't have a foot on it. It's just a, a simple spike like a chisel. Matter of fact, a, a lot like the poor man's uh, router plane, you may have seen, uh, say, Rex Kruger make or uh, Paul Sellers shows how to make those. Now, sharpening this, I took it out of the box and it was fairly sharp from the factory, but as usual, you want it really nice. Um, the problem, first problem with sharpening, not our big issue, but if you look, the, the base, this bevel on the blade is almost exactly at the same angle as the base plate. In fact, it was parallel to the base plate when I started. The result of that is that this bevel actually floats over the roughness in the wood and keeps the cutting edge from being able to bite in because you're kind of riding on the heel. Now it'll cut sometimes, but not all the time. So I put it in my sharpening jig, one of these cheapo sharpening jigs. And I changed the angle by, I don't know, three or four degrees to give it some relief. So I made it a little more acute and that keeps the heel off and then it cut much better. It did take, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes on the, on the sharpening stones. And then I sharpened that up. Now it sharpened pretty good. Um, I was able to get a nice sharp out of it. It's not super hard, but I don't think it's too soft. And I was able to raise a burr with no trouble and sharpen it up nicely. So the last piece of this, there goes a neighbor. The last piece of this was is this plate, which is just a stamped piece of steel. And it's nice, but it's too small. So you can see, if I have it on here, that, uh, matter of fact, let me put this out on the end. And you can see that it'll almost fall off like this because the plate itself is very small, but the opening is really big. 
It doesn't need to be this big. It could have been quite a bit smaller and the plate could be a little larger and then I think it would actually be better. But they did include these holes. So I'm going to make a larger plate for it to, to bolt on there. And then I'll have the options of taking it out, putting it up, whatever. You can also make a really long one for if you're going to use it for doing tenon cheeks, things like that. So enough about that. Let's take a look at how it cuts. All right. I move things around a little bit. Let's see how it cuts. So what I've got is a dado that I cut on the table saw, and I purposely left it kind of rough. You may be able to see some little grooves in there. Let's get the uh, depth adjusted. It's a little light, so we'll thread it down a little bit. Well, that's probably too far. Oh, not too bad. Okay, there's a little bit more. A little bit more still. Okay. And I'm kind of this side. There we go. Now I'm getting quite a bit of meat out of there. Okay, probably could use another sharpening, but. I said I've had this for, I don't know, six, eight months. And uh, my bench is not very stable. I got to get a new workbench. Something much more solid would really be nice. So here's where you can see where the, the holes being so big. See how that wants to just bend over there? Makes it a little hard to work in from that edge. But the cutter, you know, works adequately. I think if I get it. Nice and sharp. I can make this smooth the bottom of these right up. Now, this isn't for usually used for finished visible work. It's usually used for things like cleaning up the bottom of these so they're flat. So overall, I think it's pretty good. Who's it for? Is it for you? Well, you have to decide that. Is it uh, a good value? I think it is. I think for 26 bucks. If you're not a real heavy user, if you're not doing this every day, you know, this is just a hobby thing and once in a while you need one, I think it's great. Now, if you're going to use one all the time, maybe you want the features that the more expensive ones come with. All right. Well, when I get a base plate made for it, I'm going to make a bigger base plate. I'll do another little follow-up video. We'll see how it goes. Now, I also have some other inexpensive hand planes that I plan to review. So tune in and see what I put up and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll find, if not, you know, something you want to buy, at least you'll have some information to use when you're making a decision. Thanks.